Okay, now we're going to start talking about limits here a little bit. So, limits are one of those things, they're just not completely mechanical like we would like them to be. So you have to know some different tricks on how to deal with them. So, to begin with, let's start off with this equation, y equals x minus 4. The basic idea with a limit, we can use an example to explain as follows. So, suppose we take numbers close to 5. 5.1, 5.01, or say 4.9, 4.99, Well, if you did the arithmetic with those numbers, in each case you would get out a number relatively close to the number 1. And that's the, basically the fundamental idea of a, of a limit. We're putting in numbers close to a specific number, and we're just trying to see what numbers we would get out of our formula. The notation for this is we write, in this case, we write the limit as x approaches 5. I'm taking x coordinates close to 5, and if I plug them into the formula, I get numbers close to 1. Now I think this notation's a little deceiving because here there's a little arrow that says as we take numbers close to 5, it says the limit equals 1. And it's a little deceiving. What you should really think is as x gets close to 5, x minus 4 is getting close to the number 1. But the notation is what it is and they use an equal sign. But I think this is something that confuses people. Uh, 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 they see this equality and they think, hey, it's definitely equal. Okay. In general, we write the limit as x approaches a. So we're taking x coordinates close to something. We're plugging them into our function and we get some number out. The number out that we get is known as the limit of the function. Okay, so there's definitely a whole lot of different a different ways that you deal with limits. So to start off with, there's a couple different cases. So we have the limits where x approaches a finite number, like in our last case, or x could be going off to positive or negative infinity. And all that means is we're putting in either very, very large positive numbers into our formula, we're trying to figure out what we get out, or we're putting large negative numbers um, into our formula and we're trying to see what types of numbers we get out. We'll deal with this case at the beginning. Okay, So there's a couple things that can happen. The basic idea on how you try to do a limit is you plug and chug. So for example, in our last example, notice if you simply plug in x equals 5, well, 5 minus 4 is 1, and that's your solution. Typically, most limit problems don't work out as easy as this, though. Typically, when you plug in x equals the number into your function, you'll usually either get something of the form 0 on top and 0 on the bottom. This is definitely not 1. Or you get something non-zero over 0. We're going to work on some of the cases where you have 0 over 0. And again, these aren't hard and fast rules, but they are general rules. So if you have something of the form 0 over 0, typically your solution will end up being a finite number, at least for a lot of the examples that you'll encounter. And there's probably four good common tricks to always use to approach these problems. One is you can try to factor and cancel. If there's a fraction floating around, try to get common denominators and simplify it down. If there's something to multiply out, try to expand it and multiply it out and see if that helps. If there's a radical involved, try multiplying by the conjugate. And then there's the others. There's just, you know, kind of problems that don't fit into one of these molds and you may have to be a little creative on them. So take a look at one of the other videos. I'm definitely going to do an example of all of these. And then we'll come back to the limits at infinity and also what we do on the non-zero over zero cases. Again though, limits are frustrating, 
So if they're tripping you up, you're definitely in good company. Um, I think everybody tends to have a little bit of an issue with them at the beginning.